<clears throat> what makes a car a chase car? Well, today I'm gonna explain everything about our chase car right here and show you around how things work. So, the body of the car is pretty much normal. We didn't really do anything to it aside from putting a dome and a weather station on, but that's actually removable. So that's not an issue. Soon, however, we are gonna get flashers and a light bar on the front and flashers in the rear. So people can actually see us because they ignore usual, like normal hazard lights. So nothing too special on the outside of the car. Got some stickers on the side here. Got some stickers on the rear and some stickers on this side, mainly just channel logo and advertising so people know who we are. Then we move up to the roof. We have all the interest, interesting stuff. Uh, we've got a polycarbonate dome as well as a blaster weather station and an antenna to read that. Got a first aid kit as well as a chainsaw. And of course, a so over to keep the jams going. The chainsaw is for removing debris and trees out of the road when you need to go somewhere and you're trying to help out people in affected areas. Uh, this is one of the must-have things for a chase in case something happens. First aid kit is pretty self-explanatory. On the rear seats we keep a drone, some cameras, a Sony camcorder in 4K and a Nikon D3400 with an 18 to 105 millimeter f1.3 lens and some bags with our stuff. Sometimes they're in the trunk as well, but uh, in this case it's not. On the driver's side of the car, things are pretty normal. It's just your average five-speed manual car. Nothing too special. We usually have a, car, uh, a phone for GPS here, which is pretty normal. So yeah, this is the boring side, I'd say, the driving side. And this is when you get to the passenger side, AKA my side. This is where all the magic happens. Over here, we do have 230 volts AC. We've got a bunch of phones recording. So we've got a Galaxy S8 for live streaming, a Galaxy S8 for dash cam outside, and we've got a Galaxy S10 Plus for video inside. The reason I didn't switch those up is that the S10 Plus has a lot of stuff behind the camera in the rear and the front camera is perfectly fine. Then we have a laptop with everything we need. Over here you can see all the stuff that the weather station is reading. So this is, wow, holy shit. Dude. So as you can see, it is bouncing between 20.7 and 21.3. There's probably just two set points where I can read. Fun fact, this is probably the warmest October 29th so far. But yeah, as you can see, the wind is pretty calm. Sometimes I get a reading of one meter per second, which seems about right. Humidity 73% and all that kind of stuff. There's no rain right now, so it's dry. And we can see the graphs here with temperature and humidity. So over here, you got the percentages. Over there, you got the temperature. Over here, you have the average wind speed and max wind speed, uh, all read in uh, meters per second, which is pretty nice um, for a scientific standpoint, because everything goes in meters per second, not kilometers per hour, not miles an hour, it's meters per second. This right here is wind direction. It's all the same at zero degrees. And then we might move to barometric pressure. We don't have barometric pressure on our laptop here, because that's being calculated in the weather station itself. There's a sensor in it, and that reads barometric pressure. So unfortunately, we do not have a reading from that on my laptop, but we do have the display for it still. Over here, you can see the rainfall. Well, it's pretty dry outside, pretty sunny, so no rain. And everything else is empty. Over here in our beautiful dome, we have the camera. This is a Nikon D5300, again, with an 18 to 105 millimeter F1.3 lens. It's a zoom lens, kit lens. Uh, and a Rode VideoMic Go, which is the biggest passive microphone available from that brand. And over here we have a tiny display showing what we're seeing, and we can't really see that. But that's all sitting on a tripod that we very carefully made fit. 
And we have an HDMI cable running down to here. Over here, I got a monitor that shows what the camera is seeing. So if I rotate the camera, I can see what the camera is seeing. So that's pretty useful. I don't have to look up and be weird and hope it's focused. I can just see it right there. It's in focus. Let's go. This right here is our inverter, which converts 12 volts DC to 230 volts AC. It's a capacity of 300 watts, 150 watts being taken by that. So that uses quite a bit. And of course, we got another phone for a microphone, which is wireless. I'm wearing one right here, and it's up right here. Under the hood, everything is just normal. Just a regular 1.6 liter inline four. Nothing special yet. No battery improvements yet. Although we did install a big capacitor for the subwoofer because we were having audio issues. But yeah, this is all completely stock so far. Nothing has been done to it. Even got the stock airbox. The dome is secured with four big pins and a metal plate here to keep it attached to the roof and keep it from doing weird things it shouldn't do. You can also hit your head on it really nicely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This right here is a Bresser 5-in-1 weather station. It measures wind speed, wind direction, average wind, peak winds, of course, with that. It registers humidity, barometric pressure is done in the little display. We've got rain intensity, rain um, accumulation, all that kind of stuff, temperature, dew points, everything is being measured. And that goes right here into the antenna. 25 bucks on Amazon. It's uh, fairly cheap. It runs down here through the steel pipe down into the car. Right, it comes in here right above my head. It goes down in here where it goes in my laptop. This weather station is about 140, 150 euros. So it's one of the more entry level uh, weather stations you can get that are suitable for this kind of stuff. Usually these are mounted like on a roof, for example, like there. But, uh, we mounted it to a car instead, because why not? We got a little metal lid on top of here, which we took from a fence post thing, and it has a little ball on it. We cut it off and we screwed it in here, so we don't get rain inside the car, because that would be pretty bad. The base of the dome is made out of a wood sandwich, really. So you got two wooden plates there with the dome sandwich in between, so it doesn't really go anywhere. And you can see some of the beams over there giving structural integrity across the entire dome. You can stand on this too, by the way. He's already demonstrated that. <laughs> on the first tab here, we have stuff like relative humidity and those kind of charts. Over here we have the French radar, because the French don't really like sharing their radar with the rest of the world. So we have to use a French website in French. Now, let me be a very bad French speaker. So I just look at things that kind of make sense, like humidity, whatever that is, satellite, uh, radar zoom HD, of course that's English, uh, radar precipitation. So that's kind of how I navigate this website and try not to butcher anything. Then the next website we have lightning maps, which well, it's not very interesting for us right now, but down, a little bit down south near Italy, Portugal, Spain, and the United States. There's uh, lightning going on, so we can kind of see what a storm is doing. And uh, over here, we got Kahaman, which is a German website, which I mean, we have to, this on our phones, but sometimes I like it to see it on the big screen when we don't use radar scope. Over here we have windy.com, so we can check the own model and some other models to see if the forecast is actually correct. Uh, 
On Windies, things are a little bit more smoothened out, sometimes a little bit more clearer than they are on WX charts. WX charts is this website here. You can look at all the forecast models and kind of see, uh, check during a chase whether or not the, uh, the forecast model that we're using is correct. And if it is, we can rely on it a little bit more so we can kind of like anticipate what's going to happen and see what we have to do. Over here, we have the European Severe Weather Database. This is uh, the event, the tornado in uh, France and Belgium. Uh, the supercell started, kind of started off here with large hail and heavy winds, and it moved on and produced a tornado right around here, which moved on to Belgium. This is a uh, French record, actually, 147 kilometer track, which, well, as I said, is a record for France. Uh, data here is a little bit delayed because people have to uh, make reports and ESSL and ESWD have to check whether or not the reports are valid. But you can see anything from like damaging lightning, hail, wind, tornadoes, all that kind of stuff. It's explained here. I got the sources so I can like for example click this source here. Oh and I get the data that's behind it. And if I move on one more tab I end up with the weather station which is currently switched off. So I don't see anything. Usually we use a radar scope. Um, with radar scope you can see a lot of things. I assume some of you Americans already know what it is. But we can see precipitation and wind speeds within the storm as well as a bunch of other things but these are the only two available in Europe. Uh, I currently took an example from Florida because it's the only place where the storms are currently occurring. But uh, you can see all that kind of stuff and this is what the storm is doing because if we see rotation well we can expect a tornado or stuff like that depending on what the other ingredients are and how things are set up so our main camera is a nikon d5300 on the dji ronin sc this is a beautiful camera if you want to shoot storms from a distance no rain no wind and calm i can set this up it takes about five minutes to calibrate all that kind of stuff and uh, everything is smooth when I'm walking. So I can, for example, just walk here. Let me just adjust the camera real quick. I can just walk here and walk back. And everything is all good, all stable. Or is it moving? Which is why I got this thing. It stables up. This right here is our second main video camera. This is a Sony NX Cam, um, capable 4K. Uh, it's currently set to 1080p 100 fps so we can get that partly smooth smooth footage this camera is also used by the storm chasers for live streaming but we mainly use it as our secondary angle and of course time lapses this camera is primarily used for time lapses but it cranks out some amazing images
Wat ga je doen? Video opnemen. Een video.